Neil okay. TV and uh, Neil and Crazy Horse are kind of over there in the corner, and I'm not really sure if they actually want to just launch into this or not, but I guess we'll find out. Well, we're we're actually practicing now. Okay. <laughs> Would you like? We're going to, to play this in Ottawa. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Would you like Hopefully. me to just talk amongst ourselves and then come yes, back to you for a while? Yes, just talk amongst yourselves at home, okay. and uh, we'll be right with you. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, we're, just... we're going to take a question from uh, the audience over here because I know there's about a few thousand people who are desperate. Hey, Steve, how are you? Pretty good. Oh, definitely. Always having fun with Neil. You got a question? Uh, yeah. Paying attention, Neil? Yes. Okay. Uh, I also oh, saw the are. show. I also saw the show in Hamilton last night, which I thought was really special, um, and that was directly because you played some really rare stuff. And I was just wondering how you go about choosing the songs. Is it uh, more for the audience or for your own pleasure? It was for our own pleasure. <laughs> it was Halloween light last night. Ah, uh, it was Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, we didn't do the regular show last night because I guess we just got to a point with uh, anything repeating itself after a while wears you out. And we'd done, I think, the same running order a couple of nights in a row at least. And, you, you, we're yeah. lucky then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll do that every once in a while, and then whatever shakes out of it, we'll put back in the show, you know. You're going to put the pump organ in the show? Because we keep seeing it. But I know, you know. I actually heard you play it's it. It's really cool with just acoustic instruments, but we tried to use it on an uh, on electric song, and you can't hear it. It starts feeding back. So we're going to use it. Okay. Sooner or later. <laughs> Feed, you have a special relationship with feedback, don't you, Neil? I mean, over all the years, kind of use it as a creative force, right? I love feedback. Yeah. All kinds of feedback. Well, yeah. we hope we're not going to give you any that you're not used to tonight. Rick's out in the uh, street right now. He's got a question from the crowd that's assembled. Hey, Rick. Hey, Denise, thank you. We're, we got the diehards out here, right? Uh, Queen and John. And I'm with Graham from Vancouver. Graham, do you have a question for Neil? Okay, Neil, now, in 1972, you were quoted as saying, Heart of Gold had put you in the middle of the road and you sort of wanted to get back over towards the gutter. I'm wondering, why have you decided again to include that in your playlist? The, the gutter? Oh, you mean, why am I playing Heart of Gold? Oh, why, why have you, I love the song. Why have you decided to play it again? I'm glad you are. I'm just wondering why, you know. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm really thrilled that this is live and that I wasn't talking to a tape. Because just a minute ago, I asked a question and I said, oh my God, this guy's probably just on tape and I'm really going to be looking dumb because it's a tape. Can you hear him? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't hear you, you anyway. So uh, he's okay, let me, let me tell you the answer to your question. <laughs> he's gone. I lost him. Okay. Oh, that was a, that was a, a moment of... Uh, so I was becoming paranoid that I was really blowing it, talking to a tape. Well, you're, you're about to right now, because here's a piece of tape from Fredericton. This is a tape. It's not okay, by, a by a satellite or anything. Here's Speaker's Corner. Listen carefully. Hi, Neil. My name's Earl. This is Jeremy. We're from Neil House at UNB. I was just wondering, I thought you would never play the song Hey Hey My My again after the death of Kurt Cobain. Yeah, but you, you played it in Barry in September. Why'd you start playing it again? Am I on now to yeah, answer that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I never stopped playing it. I never said I was going to stop playing it. That's just one of those things that happens with the media every once in a while. No. I don't know how it happened. A mistake. Occasionally, there's an error. No one knows where it comes from, but it does happen. And I didn't say that, and I, you know, I think it's a shame that that uh, the song was part of that event in Kurt's life for sure. But I'm still singing it, you know. Sure. It's interesting because that the whole note had talked about Russ never sleeps as well, and and I read somewhere that Russ never sleeps actually came from Devo. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me that yeah. story. Well, uh, we were we were recording uh, my my hey hey with Devo yeah, at uh, this recording studio in San Francisco. I was recording with them, and uh, it's it's for a sequence that's in uh, Human Highway, and we we did the song. And they, you know, they arranged it with uh, Boogie Boy playing this, his synthesizer and the, they gave it a really Devo arrangement. And, uh, and he, ha he was singing it. 
you know. So he uh, was sitting, Boogie Boy was in the crib with a toaster and uh, he was singing Hey Hey My My and... And Russ never and sleeps. He, and he said, Russ never sleeps. It's better to burn out because Russ never sleeps. I said, what, what was that? <laughs> he said, Russ never sleeps. And I said, yeah, yeah. Well, where did you get that? He said, well, when we were in... Uh, when we were in Columbus, Columbus, Ohio, which is where I think they came from, or Akron. When Akron. we were in Akron, uh, you used to get a, you had a job painting signs. And uh, they painted a sign, Mark Mothersbaugh painted a sign that, for a rust company, and their slogan was, Rust Never Sleeps. So, kind of and we haven't got back to the company about who <laughs> thought of it there, but, you know, <laughs> we're on it. We, <laughs> We got a track right back to there. <laughs> Most of my great, you know, successful songs, I mean, and great and then as much there as they were successful, come from other people's ideas and stuff. Really? Just, yeah, because no. it's just, you know, I'm just listening all the time. Mm -hmm. But after you listen and it comes through, then you can, you know, claim ownership. Ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. I was a little worried No, you about just that. take it right away. Okay. That's how it works. It's a <laughs> folk process. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. We have a phone call from Jamie from Kamloops. Hi, Jamie. Hello. Hey, you got a question? Uh, yes, I just uh, wanted to ask Neil. He seems to have lots of uh, Native American influence, and being Native American, I influenced me and a lot of my friends, and I just want to know what he thinks about the direction the uh, Natives are taking with the roadblocks and uh, the fact that we're not going to take it and we don't want to get pushed around anymore and we're taking our stand. And I just want to know what you think, Neil. Uh, Cook's Jam. That's, uh, thank you and Shushwa. Brother, I think you should take a stand if that's what your heart tells you to do. Then you have to take a stand. You have no choice. I think that's where it's at. But I, th I think another thing that would really be good for all of the, all of the uh, Aboriginal nations around the world was if there was a kind of like a, a satellite uh, network where all of the uh, original peoples could uh, communicate with one another you know, globally in a, uh, in a instantaneous way. I think there'd be a lot of big successes that would happen from uh, a network for, uh, for all types of Aboriginal nations, you know? Yeah, well, that's an idea. Yeah, because many of the issues are the same. No See, that's not my idea. Uh, that was not. somebody else's idea. <laughs> okay. But it's a good idea. It's a brilliant yeah, idea. I like the idea. And I think it should be acted on immediately. We've got an email here. Um, where is it? Let's have a look over there and see if we can find it. That's it. Show the train. Neil, greetings from Scotland. Thanks for Glasgow. What a night. Well, the fact that almost every show from this tour has been taped and for the best part available freely around the world through the internet influence you in the decision to release any live recordings from this latest batch of sonic wonderment you and the horse are serving up this time out. Uh, well, you know, we are probably going to, well, we're thinking of putting something out because we recorded everything as we're doing it anyway just with the 24 track, but um, I don't know. You know, the thing that, that's affected me the most about the uh, information age and about everything is that I no longer can experiment as freely with new material. Uh, it used to be in the old days I could play a new song before it was on a record several times and develop the song in front of the crowd and then go into the studio with, with Briggs and, and the horse and, and do it, and we would get it done and we would have learned a little bit, you know, about it f through playing it. But now if I go out and play it, it's going to get out there right away. So uh, without me having a chance to finish it, if I needed to hone it down or something. So actually, uh, uh, my own freedom has been reduced a little bit by, by the information age and people trying to keep track of what I'm doing. And, and I'll sing several different lyrics to, to a song during its, uh, you know, first two or three performances before I settle on the ones that I, that I, that, that I like most of the time. Mm. I always leave it open to change them, but, you know, so what happens is the versions that I, that I wouldn't have liked to have gotten out, get out, okay. of a brand new song that I'm working on, like there's a version of uh, Change Your Mind with Booker T and the MGs from somewhere in Scotland or something, or somewhere in Australia, I don't know where the heck it is, but it's terrible. It's the first time we ever played it, and I just cringe every time I hear it. Oh, yeah. And, and even, on the, uh, even on what happened here, 
when we came to Canada on Van Vancouver, I felt like I was a little sluggish in Vancouver. So it was the first one and it took a while for me to get going and I didn't feel good about my performance that night uh, that I gave people what they really deserve. But uh, so now I'm seeing it, you know, I see Sorry that. And I feel it when I see it, I go, oh God. Well, you're, feel, you're feeling better about it now. We'll just come shoot the show in Ottawa and okay. fix that for you. No problem. <laughs> We're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back with Neil TV. We're going to take more of your questions and who knows, maybe a tune or two.